Hello amazing ones, this is Dani V here on YouTube and today we talk hydrocephalus symptoms. If you're new to my channel, my purpose here on YouTube is to show you that you can live a happy and fulfilling life with a debilitating condition, sharing with you tips and tricks on how to overcome everyday obstacles and showing you real life examples of how amazing you are. Um, I have been living with a debilitating disease with hydrocephalus for the past 13 years and for me life has been pretty amazing so far. So if you're new here, please give, give for my video a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing and I'll be happy to have you around because I'll be sharing some more useful tips and tricks and some more information on hydrocephalus. Without any further ado, let's talk hydrocephalus symptoms. This is uh, my dog's bed over there. I have my iPad with me and my unicorn notebook where I have been taking notes for you guys so that I can be of more help and I can be sharing uh, more details with regards to symptoms. Um, one thing about symptoms of hydrocephalus that you should know is that symptoms may vary greatly between age groups and even between various ear uh, increments in an age group. So for example, you do have infants, then children, then adults, and then you have a split up of adults. So symptoms may vary because um, the differences in the human body uh, that are developed with aging may cause for some functions and organs to be more impaired than others. I'm going to be talking to you about young and middle-aged adults because this is when I was diagnosed. I was diagnosed age 17 and 18 transitioning. So I will be talking to you more about my symptoms within this specific age group because I can be sharing my experience. Um, so the first and more and foremost symptom, which is a headache. And the headaches are actually probably the first telltale sign because they are not easily alleviated by taking any kind of analgesic drugs. And um, they are persistent. You can actually feel them all over the head and they kind of feel like you have something, you know, something that puts tension on your head, like something is wrapped up like a um, metal orb or something like that is wrapped up around your head and it's squeezing it, like squeezing it tight. So this is the actual feeling. And then it um, kind of, you know, escalates to a headache. So this is the first sign. Um, I have had it, I had it before. It gets hugely alleviated when you do have a um, uh, shunt implantation surgery because the actual reason for it, the buildup of pressure inside of the skull gets lost, like it gets treated. Uh, next symptom is lethargy. It's um, actually um, um, constant fatigue and this fatigue is due to the fact that your body is sensing that something is wrong with it and this symptom is basically shared between a lot of um, chronic illness conditions because your body senses that there is something wrong with it but then it's constantly trying to correct it and to mend it but it really cannot because like this is not something that will just go away overnight um, so basically because of all the effort the body gets exhausted and you do feel tired all the time um, personally I thought that if I can get you know uh, more tough like I was trying to overcome it with extreme physical activities like extreme running or extreme you know fitness workouts <laughs> because I thought that if I get more tough I can overcome it um, it really doesn't work that way though because like for example your body is already having enough, like it's getting so much, you know, um, pressure and everything that is resulting from your chronic condition. And then you're putting even more to it. It deserves a break, people. Like literally, when you feel tired, your body is telling you something. Like just go and relax because it's the most uh, loving thing you can do to your body to just listen to it. It's not something that I'm doing to this day. Like I do work extreme hours. I work like 16, um, 14, 16 hours sometimes, um, in my clinical trials job. And I do love it. Like I enjoy it a lot. And it's one of the reasons like I do get, I do lose track of time and I get lost in the moment. I'm, you know, trying to respect my body more and like give it now the, uh, love and rest it deserves. Uh, one more thing is loss of coordination or balance. This is a huge one because it is, you know, the one of the most annoying ones. Um, I have personally outgrown it due to all of the running that I do 
and running does train your balance a lot. It's probably one of the best things that you can do for balance. Running and you know yoga, pilates, or any type of exercises that are focusing on balance and or on um, mindful physical activity. I have noticed the same thing with my husband who has multiple sclerosis. He has the uh, he has benefited greatly from, from you know some balance exercises and from walking because this is one of the things that uh, MS impairs mainly with in his case um so balance and loss of coordination balance is something that can be uh, worked on and it can be you know alleviated with training um then one more uh, symptom is a loss of bladder control or frequent urge to urinate i personally have never experienced this symptom i do not know like how i would be coping it because i haven't had the need to um if you're someone who is experiencing any of the symptoms which i am mentioning today or even any other symptom please do leave a comment in the comment section below um if you haven't already please do subscribe for my channel and please do give this video a thumbs up because you know it gets quite lonely living with hydrocephalus because this condition is quite rare and i literally do not know anyone else living with this condition i have been living with it for the past 13 years and everything i do and everything i know i've had to you know kind of learn from trial and error which can get really annoying at some points because I would, you know, really like to have, you know, a friend, someone whom I can, you know, just talk freely about this, who would be able to understand me because literally there's some things in living with hydrocephalus that no one can understand. And uh, if even if you're telling people, they're not experiencing those symptoms and, you know, those signs and those things, and they really cannot understand you. So if you're someone who is living with this condition or with any other chronic disease or any other rare condition, please do share with me in the comment section below. I would like to spark a discussion because it is a much needed one. There is so, so little information going on about um, hydrocephalus that um, it is kind of, you know, annoying and um, demeaning. Like we are people like every other person on earth. Like... We want to have normal lives, we want to have children, we want to have families, we want to have rewarding jobs and we want to have a great booming careers and everything. Like we're people like everyone else and um, when you're so lonely, it can some, you can sometimes, you know, lose track. And yeah, so please do share with me if you have any thoughts or comments or if you're experiencing any symptoms of um, your disease. Right, so moving forward to another symptom which I do have is impaired vision. I do have uh, um, uh, an impaired vision which is uh, declining with age as well. I do wear glasses to work and I do wear glasses when I'm working for a long time on computer. And I am constantly seeing dark spots before my eyes. This was one of the reasons why I was diagnosed and why I went to um, a doctor. And I've been seeing them for for ages, like I've been seeing them for ever, ever since I was diagnosed and even before that. Um, they are, they can get quite annoying, especially when they multiply, when they get, uh, you know, more intensive in color or when they uh, multiply, it might be a sign that something is going on inside of um, the skull that the pressure is rising. So it might be a good idea to go to see your doctor then. Um, and my, my eyes sometimes get really tired and uh, my actual, you know, uh, peripheral vision narrows down and like it gets, it, it's, it gets kind of like a tunnel vision. Um, so those are the actual visual impairment syndromes that I do experience. I do not find them particularly, you know, devastating or annoying or debilitating because I'm kind of used to them and I just ignore them most of the time. Like many of my other symptoms, like I am so bad with living with this chronic condition because like instead of, you know, acknowledging it and, uh, you know, caring for myself more, I just ignore it which is bad, which is not something that mature people do. Right. Uh, right. So another symptom, which is uh, really annoying. This one is annoying. This one is annoying. Is declining memory, concentration and other thinking skills that may affect job performance. Oh my God. Like, seriously, 
like this is probably the worst the uh, actual diagnosis and my actual sickness emerged the most when i was in my most important year in high school the last one when i was studying for finals and when i was preparing to go to university and then you guys i have a uh, a period of over a year in my life which I do not remember seriously like it has been just deleted from uh, my history and from my mind I was in a such bad position then because I had to be at my best I, I had to perform the best uh, for um, you know my exams and for moving on and my university exams but um, I got really depressed because I couldn't really remember that I couldn't remember at all, not that good. I couldn't remember at all. And I got really depressed about that. So um, I couldn't sleep because of my depression. And then due to that, I was able to put a lot more effort and a lot more hours of reading. I was, you know, just sometimes reading 18, 20 hours or 20 plus hours a day because I wasn't able to sleep. And like all that reading finally, you know, rewarded me because at the end I managed to graduate top of my class with a gold medal for, you know, graduating top of my class. I went to university, I completed my pharmaceutical science degree. Uh, of course, it took me one year longer because I spent a year in the UK studying. So then when I got back, I had to uh, make up for this year. Um, and then I finally, you know, graduated and I was so happy when I did that. And I graduated with, you know, honors and really a great degree. And I have been working and been developing in my career in clinical trials for the past six years, which has also been amazing. So I... I have had episodes of, you know, loss of concentration and memory loss at those years in those years as well. But I have developed the ability to fake it amazingly. Like I I do fake it. Like I am I do not let it slip to the outside world that something is wrong. I'm like, no, everything is fine. But basically, um it it it, it, was, it has been fine. Like I haven't had any uh that major issue living with those symptoms, I do believe that um, they can cause, they can be annoying and they can cause, you know, some trouble in your day-to-day -day life. Sometimes you really are not really up to having a massive headache when you'd rather be at a friend's birthday party or um, you um, are wouldn't really appreciate having a an episode of memory loss when you would have to be you know presenting in front of a multi-million dollar client the next day or something like that. But those things do happen, and you have to accept them. And basically, uh, uh, I was trying to fight them off almost all of my life living with with hydrocephalus and with this degree. I was fighting them constantly because I didn't want to admit that I had something going on. And as soon as I started acknowledging them and accepting them, I was like, oh no, it's okay. And everyone else around you, people around you are not, you know, some kind of monsters that will not be, you know, accepting or anything, anything like that. Well, or at least in my case, I am so grateful to be that privileged in this uh, regard. And I am so, I'm grateful every day because the situation could have been way more dramatic and way different. Um, like I'm not constantly hiding or faking or fighting it anymore and it's just it's it's just been that huge you know shift in mindset and parad paradigm shift that has been a huge huge improvement in my life so with that being said please let me know if you do have any of those symptoms Please do give this video a thumbs up. I will see you next time, guys. And um, I love you. Uh, you're awesome. You, you're amazing. And um, see you next time.